Um, I'm really excited about uh, this session, um, which is sponsored by ThinkGuard, uh, Total Data Security. Uh, Kevin Fuller is the co-founder and president of ThinkGuard, a Birmingham, Alabama-based organization focused solely on disaster recovery as a service. Over the past five years, the majority of his attention has been on local and county governments and how they can help better protect them from the myriad of situations that lead to downtime and data loss. So please visit ThinkGuard in the uh, symposium, uh, in the exhibition hall. Um, I hope you guys are enjoying the conference. And now I'm going to introduce our panelists today or our, present our presenters today. And actually, it's my pleasure. If you, if you saw my, um, my talk earlier this week, uh, you know that I think very highly of the people that I'm blessed to work with, and these are, are two of them. So I'm really um, very, very happy uh, that that I can present these two to you. So this is uh, Ted Norris and Matt Dolage. Um, they will be speaking today on a myriad of topics on 365 um, and, and and some other um, some other topics as they as they see fit. So it's going to be fun. I really look forward to this. So let me hand this off directly to uh, Ted and Matt. Thanks, Glenn. Um, so I'm going to kick it off. Me and Matt are going to kind of tag team this presentation as best we can. Um, so I'm going to try to start out with a little bit of our, our story um, as far as Office 365 goes. Um, so we started about three or four years ago um, before Glenn actually got here. So whatever time that was, we were kind of in the embassy of our Office 365 life. Um, we had been um, an Exchange 2007 um, shop for, for many years, as far as email goes. Uh, we bought Office off the shelf, off the shelf just like your, your mom and your grandma do. Um, we bought a new computer, we bought a um, Office license. So, that's kind of that ended up being a problem because we had many users with different versions of office so that that kind of raised a lot of different problems um, so that was one issue uh, obviously we needed to upgrade um, from exchange 2007 to uh, a more secure version uh, and you know one of the things that our, our previous director Phil Turner always talked about was you know, kind of our, our three, well, maybe four main applications is keeping 911 up, um, our payroll, uh, our email, and phones, you know, and being able to move our email into the cloud with Office 365 was a big project for us, and it, it made us sleep better at night, uh, being able to move that um, off-site, because it really didn't have a good disaster recovery. Uh, solution for that we didn't have a good backup solution for that anybody that's tried to back up exchange on-prem knows that story uh, so we kind of we kind of checked a lot of boxes by moving exchange online uh, so so we we kind of started that project and you know i'm me and glenn are a great team because I'm more of a keep the lights on guy, and Glenn is really always focused um, on what's ahead and always trying to, you know, kind of push us to do new things and, and kind of innovate. And that's one, um, that's one great thing about him and, you know, Matt with working with SharePoint and Teams and um, other things has, has, has done a great job uh, moving on through that. So um, I, we're hoping we're going to be able to show you kind of both sides of that. Um, we're, I, don't, I think Matt will agree with me that neither one of us are experts. We have not been properly trained despite Glenn's best efforts. Um, so some of you guys out there maybe probably know more about this stuff than we do. But what we're going to try to show you is what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. For those of you that maybe aren't, are trying to make the decision about Office 365, um, and maybe give you some pointers on um, how you can kind of move forward with um, whether you're in it, you're in the embassy, or maybe some, some tips and tricks. So with all that, I'm going to throw it over to Matt and let him start with the 
with the uh, SharePoint side of things. My pleasure. Thank you, Ted. So um, when we were implementing Office 365, uh, we had some challenges to face as far as introducing it to our users. Um, of course, a lot of users are normally, is, uh, you know, they, they regret change, but the good thing was that with Office 365 Suite, most of the users were familiar with the package that it already provided, the, the basic software, so Word, Excel, PowerPoint, they all knew that. So then um, uh, we, we did a huge campaign letting them know it was coming down the pike. They're going to get all uh, this new Office 365 suite, but a lot of it will be the same. It'll just look slightly different. And for the most part, because we did that, it was uh, accepted really well. And then we told them we're going to introduce you to something simple like OneDrive. It's a location where you could save your files online and, and access it anywhere. There's versioning, uh, his, uh, versionings of your files there. You, you could share it with other users, so that was a plus. But then as we started to explore the other applications that were available, um, SharePoint came up. And Glenn, our boss, he had uh, history using SharePoint, so the first thing that he said about it was, look, he had a deep voice already, but he said, I want you to introduce that slowly. You know, I, I don't know if it's maybe just how he said it or just how he normally talked, but that kind of, you know, that, that was part of my memory. So I was like, okay, you know, we'll, we'll go ahead and introduce it slowly because he didn't want to overwhelm the users. And so we thought, how could we introduce this to everyone? And we figured we can go ahead and, and use it as our intranet platform. Before moving to Office 365, we already had an intranet. It was very, very, uh, uh, it wasn't used that lot, a lot. Uh, we had a different um, app that managed it. We had a, a host, so we paid an annual cost for it. And um, we used that justification to get rid of that to move to Office 365. So we figured, okay, well, we don't have an intranet anymore. It was used in the past to access uh, most commonly used files throughout the county, so uh, safety reports, incident reports, any kind of forms and templates. Those were all available there. But most users didn't even know about it. The only thing that was pretty much happening with it was probably maybe like the word of the day that would rotate every day. That was like on an auto-generated thing. So we, uh, we got a hold of all the users that were involved with uploading uh, documents to our previous intranet. We showed them what SharePoint uh, could do and they were really excited about it. We wanted to ask them, well, how would you like this to be stood up? And they said we wanted to go ahead and be able to put announcements up there. We wanted to move away from having to send emails to out to everyone. We wanted to access um, uh, the, the same files that we needed before, but we had trouble looking for them. We needed to find those that better and we needed a calendar. So we went ahead and did that and this is what it looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and try to flip over my screen here. Okay, oh, and um, Matt and uh, Ted, I'm going to be keeping my eyes on the chat and the Q and A. Uh, so as questions come up, I'll, I'll I may interrupt you. All right, sounds good. So this is what we came out up with on SharePoint. Now, uh, right now, uh, this is our old site. This is our version two site. Uh, uh, it doesn't look very visual appealing. And I promise you, when we first rolled this out, it was it was uh, very well organized. Um, and the reason for that was uh, it met the needs when it first came out that everybody wanted, but um, uh, it, it, kind of how, how we marketed was that we, we put it together and we even gave a, a, a SharePoint site that was connected to the internet. It was like a hub to all the departments. We showed all the capabilities that SharePoint could do to everyone. So they were getting really excited. We told them you can make your own surveys, you can make your own lists. You can put your own files here and share it with other users. Um, you can do like these promoted links on, on the screen here that, that can kind of advertise any new projects that you all are working. And they were getting very excited. They were coming up with ideas how they can use it. We really pushed that you can access it off your phone uh, and access it anywhere. So they took it and ran with it and then it fell short. And, the re and, and this is kind of what happened. We kind of gave this to, to our uh, uh, media and it's not their fault. The reason for that, what we failed to realize was how uh, difficult uh, classic SharePoint was to use. As you would add items to the site, um, 
uh, if the as you would add these web parts, if you would move them around, you you you, you couldn't just copy and paste them, or they may delete and uh, erase. So you, you would have to try to undo it, and sometimes that wouldn't work. They would just disappear on you. So um, this is pretty much the result of that. We had all these great ideas of what we wanted it to be, and it just ended up being spread everywhere. You can see items being pushed off to the side of the page. Everything's kind of stacked, so it wasn't form formatted very well. And same thing happened for the department sites. Users were starting to make their own sites, and then that kind of fell short. So then as new apps were being released to us um, uh, in our government tenant, uh, we, decided, uh, we started to look more into groups, and we realized how um, it, had it, it had its own implementation of SharePoint with it, with their, with their modern pages of SharePoint, not classic. And we really liked the editor that was available there because all you had to do was click on a page and where you would want something to be, it would display a, a, the, the tool panel, and then you just select what item you wanted to go there and edit. And you can move it, move your items throughout the page. Nothing would start, to, uh, nothing would disappear. It was really good. So we finally learned how we can kind of make like a hybrid site. And this is what it turned out to be. So this is our version three. Let me go ahead and hide this side panel here. Um, so at, at first glance, it looks a, a, a bit more appealing. Um, the nice thing about this was as we rolled this out, uh, there was a big change in our government, our, our, our community, the culture was changing. They started to put together these think tanks that involved uh, randomly selected employees throughout the county to come up with uh, several ideas of how we can improve communication. And the intranet was one of them. Um, uh, we grabbed some of their ideas and threw that on here, and as well as we made it uh, the home page for everyone. And uh, you can see right away we have this nice section here at the top that uses a hero tile uh, for a new section, and that changes on a weekly basis. And each one of these has a nice article, uh, nice page. It uses a modern page where you can make these nice articles uh, very graphic. Uh, uh, visu visually pleasing. And then on the right hand side, we've got an announcement section and below that our calendar. Any one of our uh, de uh, departments can post to those locations and announcements they have. Um, the calendar was really nice because they can tie that to their Outlook and update it from their Outlook. Of course, what you're seeing now is just a bunch of uh, Board of Commissioner meetings, but of course, due to the pandemic, we had to cancel out a lot of our events, unfortunately. The commissioners had a section, even you can click on their profile and, and, and see how you could contact them. It was very interactive, see their bio. We could embed our uh, Twitter feed and any of our promotional videos from YouTube. We can just post them here and you can click on them and, and play them. And um, I just wanted to mention these, these YouTube videos are really good. If, if you have uh, some time later, I recommend checking out our YouTube videos on uh, our county YouTube videos. Just because I say that because each one of these are like little blockbuster videos. Uh, our, our media specialist, Chad Ray, he, he's really good at uh, using um, uh, really dramatic music or inspirational music to get the message across. And it's not like any of those like cheesy, cheesy PA videos. Uh, I mean, they have their place, but I mean, he, he makes uh, really good use of uh, video editing and especially our drones. So if you wanna see how drone footage is being used, I, I recommend checking out our videos for ideas. But so this became a, a really good hub for all of our ideas, a one-stop shop. You can see useful links on the side, uh, our budget, our popular documents that I mentioned before, our timekeeping software. You can submit a help desk to us, to our help desk system for any IT related uh, issues. Um, hey, Matt? Can, uh, yes, Lynn. Yeah, there's a there's a couple of questions. Um, is sure. the uh, Chris Smith from Lexington wants to know if there's a water cooler section where employees can communicate with each other without the use of email. Uh, that, that's a good question. That has come up before. We haven't established that quite yet. Um, uh, but no, that that is something that we've we've talked about putting up some type of message board. Each each department has the option to do that for themselves because. It's more for like the larger departments like DSS or, or uh, public safety, where they um, everyone has their own staff only site. Uh, I was gonna get into that a little bit more later, but they 
they really liked how this uh, started to develop. Um, uh, we, had another, we had another question from Earl. Uh, do we use Stream yet? He says, if not, it's awesome. Um, we, we slowly have started to use Stream. Uh, the nice thing about us, um, uh, one of the positive things that came out of us uh, working from home due to the pandemic was we were doing a lot of in-house uh, classes and we did that through Teams. And at least from that, we were able to incorporate st uh, Stream. So. And um, the Jeff Wilson and Earl uh, also have another question about anonymous log, and I'm going to push that one out until Ted does his part because you'll see that. Um, and then the G3, E3 uh, licensing mix and match. Um, we are doing some, I'll, I'll do this one because it's kind of where it falls in my uh, purview. We are E3s and are like housekeepers and um, you know, the people that are mowing grass on the, for the parks and stuff, they have a mail only license, web mail only license. We do have some a la carte licensing for uh, power apps. We also have it for um, Skype conference lines. We have a, a couple of Skype conference lines, which we use. All right, so I'm gonna hand it back off to you, Matt. Thank you. Can I, can I just say real quick? Um, sure. As far as the water cooler thing, that's that's a question we'd love for anybody that's on the chat. If they if they've done that before, we'd really love to hear about it. Um, we that's a question we've had going all the way back to intranet version negative five point um, That you know something like that, or even like classifieds, uh, you know, wanting to sell, you know, um, whatever your grandma's you know, couch or something, you know, uh, so that's something we've, we've been asked for and, you know, kind of tried to come up with a way to do it. And it, it always ended up, you know, somebody trying to sell drugs on there or something, you know, some, something crazy. Um, so we'd love to hear if, um, other people are doing that. That looks like Chris and Sylvia have, so maybe we'll reach out to them later on and All right, so I'm going to continue on. Uh, uh, continue send questions as you have as you have them or comments. Um, so, like I was saying, this became a central hub that everyone's uh, access and is starting to get very popular. Uh, and it was a lot, especially because it's more visually appealing and more pop um, uh, informational. You can see on the right side uh, we used most commonly accessed apps or. Uh, what may involve a lot of employees. So we had our county holidays. Um, we uh, implemented the solution section that was anonymous, so any comments or recommendations could be submitted there because we wanted to be a lot more open. We, we had a section that would display new hires, so you knew who, who was new in their, in their pictures, as well as who has left or promoted. So that was available. Um, and then, like I mentioned, with those articles, we were able to develop really nice visually uh, uh, visual uh, articles here. So kind of when we rolled out the new intranet site, we kind of showed where everything was located and what you can do with that and the capabilities of how to do that, as well as our calendar of events um, being a lot more uh, informative where you can add attachments things like that. So that helped kind of educate everyone on what they could do with SharePoint. Um, and we also use it as a platform to kind of, we have our disaster ready team that kind of activates anytime there's an incident uh, in our area, especially with hurricanes. Uh, some you, uh, employees would just be thrown in the role and they wouldn't know what to do. So we had this onboarding site to kind of educate them on that. Like this is what the disaster ready team does. This is who's on the, on the, on the, uh, in the group. Here's our emergency operation plan. Any FEMA forms, all that information is there. Here's how to protect yourself and prepare yourself for if something does happen as well as your family. So that was all there. And we were starting to branch out how we could use this more. We're going to use it for a safety committee. And um, this is receptive. Uh, received very well. Uh, our departments took this. We, we ran with it. Um, our DSS, they, they're using it for their uh, employees uh, so they can show what uh, for their birthday calendar. Our, our new employees, they have several hundred employees. So they, you know, just to show this is what 
our new employees' hobbies are, this is where they came from, that type of information. Even our sheriff's department and our airport, they, they ended up adopting this and really, really uh, adding different groups with it. And um, to kind of show you where, how ours looks right now, this is, our, this, is like, this is what all of our other departments see. Um, one of the, the, the challenges that came up was, well, you know, for service, for departments that actually service other departments, this is useful for them. But how about those departments that really just serve the public? Uh, why would we put anything here that was, wasn't already on our county website? So there was a, uh, as we had those think takes, one of the things that came up from our um, uh, surveys that we sent out to everybody was not a lot of our employees knew what other departments did. So right before the pandemic hit, we were really trying to start to use this to where those departments that really were public facing um, could do some kind of video or campaign and post it on their intranet site. So that, that was still in the works. But for us, since we were more service-based, we pretty much had uh, just links to, to different things that uh, employees um, could access. So our help desk system, if they wanted to fill out a form for borrowing equipment, um, our contact information, um, below that, any media coverage as well as we, we put together this page that was really advertised on the front of our site, our intranet, when we were um, starting to work from home. When the uh, COVID started happening in North Carolina, we started wondering, like, you know, it looks like everyone's going to have to work from home. Let's try to explain to them what their options were so that, you know, you could use your laptop. If your laptop was not similar to your desktop, we could outfit it for it. We have some spares. Um, did you know that you can do all of this with Office 365? Um, and then as well as you can take your desktop home, uh, uh, we can give you the v a VPN connection and we can even put a soft phone on your desktop so that uh, if your desk phone rang at the office, it rang on your computer. So, And then below that, we pretty much had like a long list. I'm not going to go through it, but a long list of web-based apps that they may not realize that they didn't need a VPN connection to access. So we really pushed that out. So there's, there's been all kinds of ideas of how we could use it. Um, and one big thing was for our staff only site. So just as we use the internet for a hub for everything, uh, for all kinds of county information, we decided to use that for our ITS staff site for our resources. We've always struggled in the past of how, we never had like one central location for all of our information. Our help desk solutions, our, our how-tos were either in a file share or, or up in our help desk system. Our files were in three different places. Our DR, uh, uh, our disaster recovery notebook was in two. So we decided to put that all here and this is what we came up with. So right away you see our help desk solutions. Our emergency contacts is visibly available on the page. You got our document cloud in one location. And then our, our most commonly accessed links uh, that are most important ones, like for our server environment, any security related links, Office 365, any of our critical uh, support links, that's all from right here. This is the first thing that you see. And on the right side, any of our systems. And uh, that serves several purposes because, of course, if we're at our desk, we have all our favorites, it's good to go. However, as we would get these new systems, um, our, our sys admins would, or whoever the expert was for that system would kind of throw that into teams or in emails and um, we would probably put it into our favorites or we, we would just ignore it. Uh, I mean, not intentionally, but you know, we would miss it in the, in, in the uh, ch uh, chat chain. So um, we started grabbing all that and putting that here. And the nice thing about that was, is as we had new employees, um, this would be their quick onboarding. They can grab all that information here, as well as with SharePoint being mobile, all we had to do was take this link and make it as a shortcut on our phone, as well as we had even did some type of redirect with our county website that automatically you type it in, you know our county address, you type in the, after the slash a certain address and it takes you here automatically, you just log in. So that was the neat thing, it was accessible on your phone. So if you were with a customer, you needed to know how to, to fix something, you go to our help desk solution from your phone and there you go, it's all available at your fingertips. So, you know, just going down the page, we, we use it as an additional uh, uh, 
portal for our, our news, any new information that came up, our training sites, uh, any system shortcuts that was web-based, our disaster recovery, our, our notebook, and of course, um, as this came about, we started uh, using Planner for our, our projects. Um, but let me, let me jump into our help desk system. I'm probably taking up some of uh, Ted's time here. Um, so this is what our help desk uh, uh, solutions page kind of looks like. It kind of, we currently use to manage as our help desk tool. And um, it is really nice, but there wasn't a way until recently they started adding categories to any of your solutions. So however you fix things, um, but it wasn't really well organized. So we decided to use this for that. Um, and all you have to do, you can see that it's, it's organized by like key solutions. Most of our critical items like dispatch or public safety software or any uh, malware phishing items are at the top. Software and hardware and it goes down even like down to programming items, components. But let's say if you had an Outlook issue, you just find it and click on it. It would automatically go to our help desk system. And let's say we had a threat with a potential spam, we just find that. And all this would come up, uh, we can tag all of our solutions. And you can see this, these are all tagged by Outlook and you can do multiple ones if you wanted to. But um, this one right here, this is how it looks. Okay, we need to kind of strip email uh, this one spam that went to everyone's inbox and like Ted, pretty much he just sent an email on it and all I did was copy and paste it in here. So he's gonna go over that a little bit more later. But that was the benefit of it. And um, kind of what the game changer was, was of course you didn't, if you realize I didn't have to log into this, we, we've implemented uh, Adaptive. It is a um, single sign-on solution. So uh, just like on the phone, as long as if you log, uh, log into our Office 365 tenant or uh, some manage one time, it keeps you logged in for the week. So it kind of branched that over to, so if I, if I click on this within uh, SharePoint, our help desk solutions, that's how it was able to stream uh, flow very nicely into our help desk system. So that was the nice thing about that. And, and the, the other benefit was that we, we really didn't, unless you're opening up Excel or Word, we didn't even have to download SharePoint to our phones. We just needed that link. Same thing like if we were on our home computer when we were working from home, if, we, if it was all web-based through Office 365, we really didn't need to download any, anything. It was all web-based and Adaptive took care of the rest, so. Hey, hey Matt. Yeah. Um, you know, I will say this this um, makes it easy for the least technical among us to be able to do things. And when I say least technical, I'm referring to me. Um, but the other, uh, we have another question. Um, the, somebody had to take a phone call and they asked if this would re be recorded. Yes, this is being recorded and will be available after the conference. Um, and then Earl wanted to know what challenges do we run into moving file share data to SharePoint in relation to file types, Esri data, EXE, ISO? Um, uh, so uh, initially a lot of our users try to put everything into uh, SharePoint and OneDrive and of course they learned right away that there were files that they couldn't add on there. Um, and right now we still kind of use, and, and I'll, I'll let Ted chime in or Glenn because they probably have a lot more experience with it, but they uh, are keeping our network, network file shares at the moment for those uh, needs. So did you have anything else to add on that, Ted? Yeah, uh, it's definitely, um, it's one of, Glenn's, one of Glenn's favorite sayings, and I'll probably botch it, but you know, don't let, don't let perfect get in the way of pretty good. And I think when we, we started this, you know, our goal was, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna do away with our file server and everything's gonna be in SharePoint and that's the way it is. And guess what? That ain't the way it is. Uh, so you take um, certain departments have, and that's kind of been our, um, kind of our game plan is let the departments drive it. So our planning department has done a great job of moving their um, data, their, their, File share, just like most of you guys, you know, we've got a file server with a, you know, department folders set up so they can share files and that kind of stuff. Their, 
their file share was a mess. You know, it had stuff from that were that was 15 years old and nobody had ever touched, um, and it was unorganized. And they took the opportunity to use SharePoint to kind of get all that straightened out. Um, and they, you know, of course, they've got a lot of people out in the field, so SharePoint was the perfect um, solution for them. You know, for a department that's that's stationary you know it doesn't really make sense for them to use sharepoint they don't ever need it they don't ever need the data um outside the building you know a file share might be the best answer so um we've kind of we kind of taken the approach of what whatever tool works best um is is going to be what we use i think um you know for us like our you know we have a share with software and stuff I mean, to me, it's, it would be silly to try to move that to SharePoint because, you know, we want to try to install software from SharePoint. So we're always, I think we're probably always going to have our, our file server with, with certain departmental shares on there, but we encourage our departments, if it makes sense, to move their stuff to the cloud or SharePoint. So Matt, Matt mentioned something before, Ted, about um, deleting emails and then adaptive. Uh, can you dive into some of that? So Matt, are you done? Oh, uh, sorry. <laughs> uh, just about. I'll, I'll just show okay. one more thing because okay. I'm. Oh, sorry. No, no problem. Uh, so of course we're we're looking to see how we're constantly seeing looking into um, how we can explore this further. Just the the one um, last item that I wanted to show you is we've just started to incorporate Power BI into it. Uh, when we first got SharePoint, Glenn always wanted to kind of see how users can kind of look up their computer and try to see how, uh, when they're getting a new, new device. And this is, it's, this is a work in progress. This involves Power BI. Uh, it's not fine tuned quite yet, but eventually we'd like to get it to where um, employees can just type their name and then find out when, they're, when their warranty's up to get a new computer, so. And, uh, and, and also uh, we've been using this uh, on the programming side to house all of our scripts because the, the modern pages allows you to have this nice way to display scripts. So, and, that, and that's all I have. Um, I'll, I'll pass it on over to Ted. Very cool, Matt. Um, I, think, I think Glenn will back me up on this, um, but I think what you guys just saw, I, I, we, first of all, I think this is really cool. Um, and I think it's an example of what happens when you give talented people kind of the tools and the freedom to be creative and and just kind of let them go and you know me and me and glenn didn't say hey hey matt go build this site and make it do all this stuff you know he and you know a couple others from our department kind of came up with all this stuff on their own and um we're just we're kind of we think it's awesome uh so good job matt <laughs> All right, so let's see if I can figure out how to share my screen. Can you guys see me? Shake your head if so. All right. Yeah. So now we're gonna move into the crash and burn section of the uh, presentation. Um, so we're gonna, I'm gonna roll you through a couple of live demonstrations on a couple of different things we can do with uh, Office 365. Um, one of the main things that that Glenn wanted us to concentrate on was improving the user provisioning and deprovisioning of um, you know our new hires and people that are, are no longer with us. Um, I think all everybody listening knows kind of the problems with that. Um, our our initial, well not initial, but our, our process for doing that has changed over the years. Um, you know, we, we used to get an Excel spreadsheet from HR and, you know, basically create them from scratch, you know, and then we would have to go, you know, when it was on-prem, we would just have to go in and create the mailbox, just like everybody else knows how to do, I think. Um, when we moved to Office 365, we were using, um, AD Sync, AD Connect, whatever they're calling it now. Um, and the process, we were in a hybrid environment and we still are in a hybrid exchange environment. 
So we would create the, the user in AD, then create the mailbox uh, locally on our on-prem server, and then migrate that mailbox up to Office 365, and then have to you know, do the licensing and all that stuff. So it was a pretty painful process for each user, especially if we were getting if we were getting a lot of new hires, and it kind of varies with us. You know, we're you know a medium-sized county, so um, you know we we might get 15 to 20 uh, new hires in a week, depending on what's going on. Um, so after um, a little while being on Office 365, we decided we wanted to uh, move into an identity identity and access management solution. So we went through a kind of a long process trying to figure out what the, the right choice was for us. Um, and we're already using a company or a solution called Centrify for our for sign on access or Active Directory integration into our help desk system. So um, Centrify kind of spun out into Adaptive and that's what we use today. And I think a couple of you guys may be on that. I know I've talked to um, a few others that are, are using Adaptive. Um, but it works pretty good. It's really helped our, our provisioning process. And we're, we're hoping to use it more for, we're, we really want to roll all our applications into that. Uh, and that's something we're actively working on. So what I'm getting ready to show you is um, hopefully about a two to three minute process of creating a user and having, the, having, the, having them show up in Office 365 with a license. So here we go. So the first step would be, to typically we copy users to create a new one. So we will come to our domain controller and create a user. And you know, one thing we really wanna do once we get um, a little bit further down the line is kind of create scripts for our HR folks to be able to do this. Um, we really think that can happen. I know, um, you know, other counties are, are doing that or, you know, having triggers from their um, HR system to create these users. So that's something we, we definitely want to do. So once you have the user created, basically we would come down here and, you know, type in what their email address would be. Then this SMTP, we have to enter this um, proxy address. Again, we could script all this if we wanted to, but we don't. So once this user is in here, then um, Adaptive is kind of actively looking for changes to Active Directory. So I'll bring you over to our Adaptive connector. And hopefully we can see, um, this is pretty much all it is. It's a, it's, a, it's a little client that runs on this server and it's constantly monitoring AD for changes. Um, so, whether we can see this or not, let me, I wanna copy and, and paste this over in Notepad. Oops. But you can see kind of how it's checking for, um, you can see how this user has, you know, typed in a wrong password. So this helps us troubleshoot um, login information and that kind of thing. Um, let me bring you over to the adaptive um, interface and let you see what that looks like, if I can see it.
we have multi-factor authentication turned on for um, I, ITS staff in um, for the adaptive cloud. Um, we use the the little app on the phone. It works kind of like if you guys use Duo or whatever. It's it's pretty much the same deal. You get a little notification on your phone and you hit the button. Yeah, sorry, I can't show you that. But I hit approve on this and you'll see it'll it'll kind of just push me in to the um to the portal. So we can see all our users, um, the web apps. So let me bring you into the Office 365 app and show you how this works. So Adaptive has, has um, we basically have federated our Office 365 instance through Adaptive. So we can see see that here. We go down to, and this, this is a kind of a service account that we use to authenticate up to Office 365. So if we go down to provisioning, this is where kind of the interesting parts are. You can see that it it knows about our the licenses that are um, available to us. Um, you can see how it's it's syncing these particular things. Um, when we when we disable a user in Active Directory, it's going to remove the licenses, which is a big thing. And, you know, I, anybody that works with any Microsoft product knows that licensing is a kind of a pain in the neck. Um, so I forgot to show you the, the groups while we're on the domain controller, but so we created groups for all these different licensing types. Um, and those licensing type, th those groups match to a role in Adaptive. And then from here, we take that role and tell it what what license to give them. So if you if you belong to the group 0365-E3, then you're going to get a E3 license or G3 license, whatever they're calling it today. So let's see if we can log in. And you can see with this process, I should have said this before, but you see how it redirects us over. When we go to portal.office.com, when you try to log in using anything at onzocountync.gov, it'll redirect you over to the centrify slash adaptive login page. And we're here. So guess what? It worked and I didn't crash and burn. That's great. So it's kind of scary. Uh, <laughs> so let's go back over to the admin side of Office 365 and we'll see, we'll take a look at that, how it created that user. Sometimes it takes a little while for the mailbox to get um, activated and all that kind of stuff. But you can see how it, it gave that Nickel Jesus test four user um, that the appropriate license. Um, and it's it's probably in the process right now of building out the mailbox because that does take a little time. But again, you know, you saw you guys saw how easy that was. Um, our help desk person is typically the one that creates these users. And you know, it's taken, you know, probably a 15 to 30 minute process. It's it's gone down to you know a minute or two um, on the domain controller to create those users. Um, so we're we're really happy about that. Let me show you what the user looks like in the adaptive portal as well. It does give you some really good information on um, you know, what's happening in Adaptive. You know, we can see 
the you know kind of user activity in here and you can also see that in office 365 and i'll show you guys that if we have time um but you know if a user is having problems getting logged in if they're getting locked out sometimes we can come in here to activity and it'll it'll show us what's going on if you know maybe some you know we have had instances where their account's been compromised and we can see from here you know okay well they're you know logging in from a weird ip address and that kind of thing and you see they're assigned Office 365. For our help desk, we have to add them to a different group um, for them to go in there. Um, so that's what that side of things looks like. If you have any questions about that, just throw them in the chat and we'll try to try to answer them. I guess that there is a question about um, an MDM. Um, the question was, do we use uh, Intunes as our MDM, and I said no, but they want to know what we are using as our MDM. If you will speak about that a little bit before you start diving into the mail stuff. We use we use thoughts and prayers for our MDM. Uh, so we we don't we haven't implement, implemented one yet. Um, you know we do enforce kind of um, the the kind of standard rules when it comes to using you know putting mail on your your phone and, and that kind of thing, but we um, we have not implemented an NDM solution yet. Uh, yeah. Now this adaptive um, can geofence and can tell you where the, uh, the server, where the device is logged in from. Yep. So, you know, we've kind of gone back and forth and just like I'm sure everybody, you know, I know some of you guys have implemented them and, you know, those of you ha that haven't implemented MDM have probably done the same thing we have and tried to figure out, make a business case for it. Um, we just haven't been able to make that business case for it yet. So um, and that's where we're at with MDM. So... That's kind of the user provisioning part. Like we, I showed you a little bit earlier, as far as deprovisioning goes, um, and this is something that Matt can probably talk about a little bit too. Um, for deprovisioning, we um, will make changes, we'll disable them in an Active Directory, which will remove their license. Um, so that, that makes it a lot easier if you don't have to manually do that part. Um, I know there's been a lot of talk on the listserv about uh, Office 365 backups and you know that kind of thing we do have the in place um, the litigation hold all, turned on for all our accounts um, that makes it really hard to delete stuff in Office 365 um, we we utilize so kind of the process when we when we when a user leaves us we will take their mailbox and convert it into a shared mailbox. I'm not sure if it's, uh, well, I don't think it is, but basically you don't need a license for a shared mailbox. So once we move that, move that um, mailbox into there, you know, obviously we're not using the mailbox and it just kind of stays there as long as we want it to. So we, you know, make sure the permissions are, are set correctly if, if anybody needs to see it. And that's kind of what we do with their, their mailbox for their OneDrive um, files, we actually move those into uh, an archive site, an archive SharePoint site, um, and we kind of got the permissions locked down on those. If if a supervisor or you know maybe HR needs to see those, then we we kind of pass access um, over to those. But that's kind of what we do from user deprovisioning side of things. Did I miss anything, Matt? All right, so. Here's the second crash and burn that I'm gonna um, try to show you guys. Uh, one, one big thing that we were not able to do, and, and possibly we were able to do it, maybe just didn't know how to do it when we were running mail on-prem, but I think probably all of us have been in a situation where um, a bad email gets through our 14 spam filters, and then you're like, okay, well, what do we do now? Um, and before, we didn't really have an easy way to delete those messages across um, all mailboxes. So with Office 365, um, we have this protection site. So I'm going to basically show you guys how we, we go in and delete, you know, a possible phishing 
message across all mailboxes. So this is the kind of the search box, um, the search tool for all um, where you can search for not just emails, but SharePoint files and all that kind of stuff. So let me, I'm going to go over to my other screen here and send, a, send myself an email from my Gmail account. So just to show you, there's no cards up my sleeve. One thing Glenn wanted me to mention is that we actually have given that, that tool um, to, uh, to our HR staff. So when we have public records requests or investigations that they need to do where before, uh, we were, they were pushed that down to us. Now HR is able to, to run those types of reports. So you can see that somebody named Ted Norris has sent me an email saying, man, Journey stinks, which I happen to agree with. And, you know, I'm sure people are gonna get mad in the chat, but I don't really care. But, uh, so we're gonna go run a search on that email so we'll do the date and the subject and then Typically, we would we would run that we would just hit this button to select all for all mailboxes. But for time's sake, we're just gonna I'm just gonna choose myself. And we'll hit save. And want to give it a name because we'll need that name here in a second. So it's going to run a search on that on my mailbox for that subject on today's date. Now, it's it's, it's kind of important to make sure that uh, okay, when when spammers are sending us those types of emails, they they make they make it so it's hard to search for these things. You know, they'll put an invoice in the subject line. Well, we'll get county's getting a thousand legitimate emails every day for invoice so it's really kind of the art to this is making sure you you craft the search so you're only catching the emails that you want to delete because we're going to delete them here in a second um, the good news is we're going to make it disappear from the user's mailbox but you're not really deleting it <laughs> you can always come back into here and and grab the message um, so we could, we could always kind of get it back, fortunately. So well, don't stop believing that it'll find it. <laughs> Let's see. While we're waiting, <laughs> this is who you guys are standing up for in the chat. I'm sure I'm not, I don't have time to look at the chat, but anyway. I don't like journey guys, it's just the thing. Oh, uh, where'd my window go? All right, so we've got one result and hopefully it's gonna show us the right one. One thing we've learned with Office 365 is it kinda, Things work at its at their own pace, so that's that's one disadvantage. I would say you kind of have to give it time to do things, uh, especially like this, um, like when we're adding a license or that kind of stuff. Sometimes it it takes a little bit longer than you expect, so just kind of have to have patience with it. Sometimes um, I'll bring it over to the PowerShell window. Um, 
So with, with PowerShell, we basically have to, all these commands you see up here, user credential, you're, you're passing your credentials on. And then this, this command here connects you up to the protection site. Um, so this new compliant search action, um, and then you pass the search name, which is going to be journey. And then the, the purge tells it basically to delete it out of the user's mailbox. You can also, I think it's, there's a soft purge option, which will, will end up putting the email in the, like the user's deleted items, which we don't want to do for this. So let me see if I can show this. So we see the email there. We'll come over here and hit enter. Uh, time me out there. It's going to ask me if I want to do it, do them all. And so hopefully you know, it went pretty fast, but you saw that that email kind of just disappeared there. So that that would be the. It obviously takes a little bit longer if you're doing it across the whole organization, but um, it's an easy way to get rid of. Um, those types of emails that you don't want to see in your user's mailbox. We, we typically will only do that if it's something malicious. Obviously, there's some public records concerns um, for doing that. Again, you can always get it back, but um, that's kind of how that works. Do we, do we have any questions, Glenn, that we need to get to? I know we're running out of time. Um, yeah, so we, we did have a question, actually. Uh, they wanted to know how a non-fan of Journey had it so readily available in the browser tabs. <laughs> uh, that was from my like Chris Davis. Uh, do we know him? Who? Yeah. Got it. Writes really small, I think. Mr. Four Point Fox. Yeah, so um, the uh, persistent question is, will this be available uh, will a recording of this be available? And, and yes, a recording of this will be available after um, this after the conference. I don't know when after the conference, but it will be available after the conference. I'll also say if any if any of you guys are um, kind of in the process of implementing this stuff, um, all of us are more than happy to help our Nickel Jesus brothers and sisters out. Got any questions? Um, are always available to kind of uh, shoot us an email or give us a call and we're, we're happy to talk to you about the mistakes we made and uh, you know maybe what we would you know try a little bit different um, if we had to do over again. Yeah, we're really good about discussing um, mistakes because we have plenty of material. Um, so uh, I do want to cl clarify a couple of things. Uh, Ted mentioned that quite a few of this was my idea. That is uh, actually patently false. Um, I don't have good ideas. I've got um, a fantastic team that have um, much better ideas than I. We just ask really good questions. Um, but this, uh, guys, I think this was just awesome. I'm not seeing any other questions that we have not, um, that we've not answered. But I will say, you know, just watching you guys, I, I get to see you guys do this on the daily. Uh, but watching you present it and 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 have it all up, or you know, you see, I'm watching what you're doing on the screen and everything. Uh, this was really really great. Um, both of you guys had just phenomenal content. So uh, if there's any other questions, ah, here we go. Um, yeah, I'm recording in the session. Yep. Um, yeah. So if there's uh, any other questions, um, we'll be here for a little while or they will, uh, to be able to answer those questions. Uh, we'd like to uh, remind everyone to uh, please go and visit the sponsors, visit the vendors in the exhibition booth, uh, especially ThinkGuard. They're the ones that sponsored this. Um, and, uh, yeah, Mark, we can also talk about Kronos sometime. So, uh, yeah, they'll be here for questions and answer, and, and they can definitely uh, help. Um, oh. Did uh, we implement Adaptive when we went to Office 365 or was it done after the go live? Ted? Yeah, it was after. Um, 
well after. So we were probably at least a year or two in, right, Glenn? Um, you know, time sometimes moves differently for me than others. <laughs> but, uh, it was it was after. Uh, but if we had to do it over again, we definitely would would start with adaptive or another solution. Oh no, Chris uh, Smith from Lexington. Yes, don't forget to fill out your census. Um, yeah, I'm on the census committee here too. So yeah, I thank you for I that. Mine out. <laughs> and my mama's. Excellent. Wow. All right. Uh, well, if there's uh, any other questions, please. Um, They'll be here for a little while to uh, to discuss and answer them. If you uh, if you have any other, uh, if you'd like us to meet with you, our emails are rel uh, very available. Um, I, I can't speak for some reason. Um, they're very available, and we're happy to set up anything that we can to help you all. So I hope you all have a wonderful Friday and a great Memorial Day weekend. Thanks, guys. Thank you.